What's going on guys? Isaiah here from Goob Gaming and today me and Logan are going to go over the sprite deck. Now the sprite deck going into the post power of the elements format is supposed to be what everyone believes is going to be the best deck. But we're going to take a look at it see how we're probably going to build it going into the first week in the power of the elements. This deck's really cool. I'm just excited to play frogs just like most people. But let's go ahead and check out the deck list. Alright guys, so jumping straight into the card by card. We got three blue, three jet, two red, one carrot, three starter, and smashers. Yeah, so um, obviously you play three jet, three blue, and three starter. Those are obviously, ironically, starters. Um, but the reason you play two of the red one is because it helps you play through hand traps. And it's overall just, like, really good if you've already used jet and blue. Carrot's overall the worst one because the only one, the only thing that really stops turn one is imperm and, like, a low... Imperm's pretty low impact as long as it's on gigantic sprite, so that's not that big of a deal. Uh, starter's really underrated, or not starter, um, Smashers is really underrated because it can out a lot of the problems for the deck. Like, it can out, like, uh, Rivalry, Goes In, um, Mystic Mind, Skill Drain. Uh, also, it just helps you play through Dark Roller no more, and it's another point of interaction if you started with Starter. And I've seen, I've seen a few people cut this card from the deck, but I definitely would not because Smashers just allows your deck to have a different dimension of interaction that your deck normally wouldn't have. Um, and it's all engine, and it's pretty free to play. Like, yeah, it's kind of a brick, but it also allows you to outwind to turn one, which is really nice. Moving on to the best cards in the deck, in my opinion, are 3 Diva, 3 Swap Frog, and Ronin Toad, and a Dupe Frog. A lot of people are choosing not to play Dupe Frog, but why are we playing Dupe Frog? Uh, so a lot of people um, don't play Dupe Frog, and the reason that we decided to play Dupe Frog is because if you play against, well, not only some people side in uh, Alpha, the what's what's the card's name, the King ha Alpha, the Master Three Thousand Attack guy, Master of the High Beast guy, Alpha, whatever his name is, I don't really know <laughs> card names, or Pankertops, I know that card's name. Um, and if you don't play Dupe, if they just special summon Pankertops, in a battle phase. Attack over your toad, and then fill in battle phase. Tribute their panker tops. Pop your pop your link too. Your toad didn't get any value. Didn't get any negates, right? Um, same thing with uh, alpha because they go they summon alpha. Enter battle phase. Attack over your toad, uh, and then main phase two. They use alpha's effect, and then sure if you chain your link two to bring back toad, then they can just bounce the toad because alpha doesn't target. The monster it bounces on your side of the film. So we're playing dupe for that reason, but also um, it allow like against tier elements, their huffins the sixteen hundred attack hand trap, uh, it, which is sixteen hundred attack, and the link two in our deck is only fourteen. So if they if they summon that turn one, even if they don't hit, they can just hit like attack over your link two, your battle attack over your link two, and it basically just outs one of your negates for free if you don't play dupe frog. Um, which is huge because tier elements is obviously going to be a really big portion of the metagame as well with Sprite. So uh, I think this card's definitely needed in the deck. It just allows you to protect your board and make it a lot harder to out, even though it's a bad card to draw. Yeah, it definitely feels bad to just have your whole board wiped by one card as Master of the Beast. Obviously, we're playing Call by the Grave, and then Triple Tactics. Triple Tactics is a card that's been kind of in and out of the meta, but I really think going into this, especially the first week, it's going to be really strong because... A lot of the new decks that are going in can play so many going second cards, like Hand Traps, and this card just is really good against Hand Traps. And this card is really good against a lot of the decks in the meta playing into their boards, too, helping you break boards. It would play 3 Droplet, 3 Imperm, 3 Ash, 3 Valor, and 3 Ogre, 3 Ogre, 3 Gamma, and the Driver. Obviously, it's one big perk about this deck, is you can play a massive amount of Hand Traps and still play under 60 cards, which a lot of decks can't do anymore. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people have been choosing not to play Droplet in this deck. And I think Droplet is just kind of needed, because, like, if your opponent just draws really well in the mirror, Droplet can kind of help you break that board. But also, turn one on your turn, and it allows you to negate, like, Winda or Draco's Tapelli or whatever monster they decide to make. And that's actually super important. Um, this card's super flexible, and being able to be used on your first turn of the game while you're trying to combo is actually super important. Jumping into the extra deck, uh, we're playing Zeus, Downard, two Gigantic Splite, uh, one Gin Buster, one Sky Calvary, one Toad. Some people play more than one Toad, but I really just don't think you need it. You can recycle it, you can summon it off your Link 2, one's going to be enough. I mean, you can probably find the room to play more than one, but it's, I don't really just think it's needed. 
uh, one Almirage, two Elves. Uh, we're playing the Codebreaker in the extra deck for a side deck card. IP Unicorn, Hida, and Access Code Talker. Yeah, the only thing you could add to this extra deck is you could cut the Codebreaker guy and play a Hout. Um, but we're not playing actually any of the good tuners to summon off of Hauk. Uh, but one reason you would want to play Hauk is being able to summon a card like Ash Blossom out of your deck and then bouncing it with Swap Frog if you hard open Swap Frog or brought back with Link 2. So that is an option you can have. Uh, but we wanted to highlight being able to play Codebreaker with Deck Dev. So if you want to play that, you could also just side the Codebreaker if you want to find room for that and still play Hauk in your extra deck. But we just wanted to bring that up because. We thought it was really cool that, you know, you can play deck dev for the mirror match, and it's pretty much a one-card win, right? Yep. Speaking of the side deck, going in the side deck, we're playing Free Crow. I think this card is insane in this format. It's good against a lot of the decks. I definitely think it needs to be in your deck somewhere. Uh, three Nib, this card, I don't think it needs to be in your main deck this format because it's not the best against Splite because they just inherently play around it, but it's good against a lot of the other decks, so it, I still think it should be in your deck somewhere as well. Dark Ruler should definitely be in your deck this format. Feather Duster, you gotta have some back row hate. And a pointer, so your deck does lose the Dark Ruler no more, and I feel like this deck, sh this card should be in your side deck if you do lose the cards like that. Just being able to snipe it out of your opponent's hand is just free wins. And then obviously the deck dev with the Code Breaker. Because if you do, if you don't want to play the Code Breaker and you don't want to play deck dev, you don't have to. But I just think, going into the format, especially the start of the format, this card is really, really strong against the Mirror Mat. Yeah, um... And if you see, we don't play very much Spell Trap Removal. Uh... Just mainly because this deck has like an engine out to Mystic Mine, uh, and as well as other floodgates. Um, may that change in the future? Maybe. Uh, Eldritch could rise up if those decks become really popular. You obviously you would definitely put in more spell and trap removal in your deck, right? Um, but I, at the beginning, I don't really see that deck being too popular. But I may be wrong. Um, the deck's really powerful and allows you to play through multiple hand traps. So some people are choosing to play this Orochi card, which is a card you can summon off Diva to make a Baron. Uh, the only reason we chose not to play it was because most of the time they're going to stop your diva to begin with if they do have a hand trap, and if you don't have a hand, if they don't have a hand trap, then you're going to have to have another starter anyway with your spy cards. And if you already have that starter, you're going to be playing through their hand traps most of the time anyway. Just adding a brick into your deck, we just felt like it was unnecessary. Yeah. Um. One argument was for like you could summon it off Hulk, and then it allows you to go into Baron, and then you can make your uh gigantic sprite. But to be honest. A lot of the time, you can just navigate away to summon red before you can, uh, like if your deck's just filled with level twos, you can just navigate away to have red plus a level two and then make gigantic sprite, and it, it pretty much functions in the same way um, a majority of the time. All right, guys, so that is our take on sprite going into the first weekend of the new format post power of the elements. I'm really excited for this deck, as is everybody. Uh, personal opinion, I don't think it's the best deck of the format, but I definitely think it'll be the most represented deck, but who knows, that could all change. I'm really excited to see the new format and see how everything shapes up. That's going to be it for today's video, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to check you guys out in the next one. Peace.